more pictures as well as specs for what appears to be the RTX 3090 just leaked out. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So videocards.com just posted an article with an image of what appears to be the GA102 die. Now, this image was originally gotten over at the Chip Hell forums, and the GA102 is supposed to be the RTX 3090. Now, if you don't know what 102 signifies, well, let me break it down to you this way. Every single generation, NVIDIA typically rolls out its cards like this. The top dog performer is the 100 die, then the next most powerful is the 102, that's typically what we get in, say, like uh, RTX 2080 Ti or something like that, you'll get a cut down version of that. Then there's the 104, then the 106, etc. So with that information, we can guess that the GA102 die is probably either the 3090, 3080 Ti, or a Titan if that isn't being replaced by the 3090. And so Video Cards has this to say about it, quote, Since not a single corner of the package has been pictured in full, it is not possible to determine the exact shape of the GPU and its die size. Other rumors have suggested that the die might have an area of 627 millimeters squared. And so when they're talking about other rumors, they're talking about back in July when Igor stated that, quote, if the latest information is correct, the edge length of the chip would result in a chip area of 627.12 millimeters squared. And if you don't know who Igor is, he's been in the industry for a long time, and, you know, his leaks have been fairly on point, so he's not just some random guy over on a forum. And so talking about that 627mm GA102 die, well, for reference, if we compare it to the 2080 Ti, which is a huge die, it's only a little bit smaller. Now, that TU102 die was 754mm squared, and it was probably one of the biggest GPUs ever created. So this die is pretty massive, and a lot of people weren't really expecting that because NVIDIA's moved from the uh, TSMC 12 nanometer node to what we guess is the Samsung 8 nanometer node. And now in reality, I believe the Samsung 8 nanometer node is just a version of their 10 nanometer node that's been enhanced. And I do know that the TSMC 12 nanometer node that the Turing chips like the 2080 and 2080 Ti are on currently is actually just the 16 nanometer node from TSMC with a bigger reticle limit. At least that's what I've been told. And so knowing that, going from what is essentially a 16 nanometer node to a 10 nanometer node, even though they aren't directly comparable, you would expect the GPU sizes to get significantly smaller. And so seeing that they're not, I think that lends credence to the fact that these GPUs are going to have a really large amount of shaders, especially if the RT cores are going to be on the back of the card like was supposedly shown in that leak. Now, speaking of GPUs and shaders, Video Cards goes on to say, quote, NVIDIA GA102-3 300 is expected to feature 5,248 CUDA cores. Now, this isn't the first time I've seen 5,248 shaders being thrown around. In fact, I myself even predicted a long time ago that we would see between 5,100 and 5,200 ish shaders on the cut down variant. Now, if the 3090 is a cut down variant, that has me a little bit worried because that might mean that we are going to end up getting a Titan and the 3090 isn't replacing the Titan. So, Oh lord, I hope that's not like $3,000, and then prices are just going to be raised across the board because we I really don't see how the market can sustain that right now. We're in the middle of a recession, they have GPU pressure from AMD that will be shipping their GPUs shortly after NVIDIA ships theirs, and then on top of that we have the consoles launching soon, so I just, I don't see how prices could raise even more, but I guess NVIDIA could try it, even though everyone hated that with the 20 series. Hey, enough people bought it, so maybe they feel like they can. But in any case, this would be cut down from 5,376 shaders, and it makes sense to have a GPU with 5,376 shaders as a marketing type of thing because if you take the GeForce 256 times 21 years, well, that gives you 5,376. Now, it could just be a coincidence, but to me, I think they probably would do something like that. So now let's talk performance. Since we know that it's going to probably have somewhere around 5,248 shaders, and we also know from a previous leak over on Twitter from the user Row Game that the GPU is going to have a maximum peak clock of 2.1 gigahertz, well, we can go ahead and figure out what the maximum theoretical performance, at least peak performance, of this GPU is going to be. So if we take that 5,248 shaders and we times it by 2, and then we times it by the peak clock of 2,100 megahertz, and then we divide by a million, we get 
22.0416 teraflops. Now, there's no way to accurately compare this to Turing because in reality, these new Ampere cards could have much better efficiency, like they could get more done in a single clock cycle. So to make up for that, let's assume that these Ampere cards have about a 10% IPC jump. And so IPC being instructions per clock, that would put it at about 24.25 Turing teraflops, and that's a huge number, but how does it compare to the 2080 Ti? Well, in order to find that out, I have a 2080 Ti Founders Edition on me right now, and I went ahead and reset everything to default, no overclocks, and I ran a few applications and observed the peak clock. And so what I saw was that it peaked out at 1965 megahertz. So to make things easy, let's go ahead and round that up to two gigahertz, and let's do the math and then compare them. So if we take the 4,352 shaders that are active on the 2080 Ti, and we times it by two, and we times it by the peak clock of 2,000 megahertz, well, that gives you 17.4 teraflops. That's significantly less than the numbers we just crunched for the supposed RTX 3090. So if we compare them, and we take those 24.25 theoretical teraflops in the 3090 divided by the 17.4 in the RTX 2080 Ti. Well, in terms of peak clock, that makes the 3090 about 39.3% faster. And I find that kind of funny because for a really long time here, I've been saying that, you know, expect a card that's between 35 to 45% faster. In fact, I've said I'm going to guess that it's going to be 40% faster for quite a long time now. So this does make a whole lot of sense to me and you know there's one thing we're not taking into account is the fact that even though in theory it could be you know 39.3 percent faster it might be that in reality it's only 35 percent faster it could also be that the ipc jump on these new cards is much larger than we expected it could be 15 20 percent faster per clock it's stuff we don't really quite know right now but again expect it to be somewhere around 35 to 45 percent faster anything outside of that range would actually surprise me. Now, the only thing that's strange about this to me is the fact that this card can supposedly hit up to 1,008 gigabytes per second. And the way we find that out is because supposedly this card's gonna have 21 gigabits per second GDDR6X. And if you take that times the 384 bit bus, which will be necessary to have 12 gigabyte or 24 gigabyte memory on the video card, well then that gets you 1,008 gigabytes per second. And you know, if you compare that to the RTX 2080 Ti, which gets 616 gigabytes per second, well that's a pretty massive increase in memory bandwidth. And it could be that it needs it, but I kind of doubt that it does. Like why would you need a GPU that's only gonna be roughly 40% faster, but has 64% higher bandwidth. I mean, the 2080 was not bandwidth starved. I even did tests on it myself. There's a video out there if you do wanna go ahead and watch it where I prove that reducing the memory clock in the 2080 Ti by gigahertz and increasing it by three gigahertz has very little impact on the performance. You know, if they ran it at 19 gigabits per second, well, that would still be 48% more bandwidth than the 2080 Ti. And again, if it's around 40% faster, that would actually make a whole lot more sense to me. Now, it could be that because it has this supposed second GPU on the back that's going to handle all these ray tracing calculations, it could be that it needs a whole lot more bandwidth because maybe that requires even more bandwidth than just the regular GPU. It's just something we don't really know yet. And now my only last question here is, is it gonna be 12 gigabytes or 24 gigabytes? There have been rumors going around for some time of a $2,000 video card and a $1,400 video card. Both those prices are ridiculous, but hey, getting 24 gigabytes for $1,400 is a lot better than having to pay $2,000 for it. But I know Nvidia, and I'm willing to guess that they're gonna sell you a 12 gigabyte version for $1,400, just an absolutely absurd price. And then they're gonna save that 24 gigabyte version for a Titan with the full fat 5,376 shaders, and they're gonna make you pay at least $2,000. I mean, $2,000 would technically be a better price than it was last time around, but that doesn't mean it's a good price. That's still a really, really large amount to spend on a gaming graphics card. I mean, they better have all kinds of studio drivers with a card like that, because if you just wanna play video games, don't spend that much money. I mean, hey, if you got the money, I guess do what you want, but my advice would be, these things lose value really fast and just getting slightly higher performance for thousands of dollars more 
not worth it. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the leaked die shots as well as the performance? Do you think it's going to be 30% faster, 40%, or 50% faster? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and of course, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, NVIDIA and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.